Hey, it's Carly with Launch Code. So we're in our last video um, of the three on how to implement model validation within our coding events application. So a summary of what we've done in the last couple of videos. We created this view model and then uh, to start the validation process, we added these validation attributes onto the view model properties um, to, to put in place some restrictions on what our application considers valid data. And then the next step that we took was inside of the controller, we, um, we added this check on our form submission action method to say, uh, to check and, and ask, um, ask the form really, or ask the, the framework is the app, is the information that's being passed through this form, does it meet the requirements that have been set on those view model properties. If it does meet the requirements, then create this new event model and add it to our, our data storage. If it doesn't meet those requirements, then just send the user um, back to the page that they're on or just really stay on that page, just given the fact that the form is, is um, retrieved and posted at the same location. So now our last step, um, well, we, we demoed at the end of the last video, we demoed that implementing this check um, does indeed uh, you know, map to these routes as we would suspect or as we would expect, um, but there's no indication to the user why they might uh, not have a successful form submission. So the final step is to add some uh, items into our ad form that will um, be responsible for displaying those error messages that we wrote on the validation attributes. And we do that with an element that uses another tag helper um, called ASP validation. So we'll say, we'll put these error messages inside of a span. And we're gonna say ASP validation for name, just like we have with these other items. And so this says, uh, this will create an element if and only if some um, one of those validation uh, attributes, one of the requirements isn't met and it will create um, an element with some information to display to the user. Basically the text that we wrote in those error messages in the view model. So let's see this in action. Oops, I didn't change the name of what these are going for. So obviously we want the one on description to correspond to the description validation attributes and we want this one to correspond to contact email. So let's save this, run it. So no information yet. Let's practice just uh, submitting an empty form. So we'll, uh, I'd anticipate that we'll still land on the current page that we're at because we won't be able to actually create an event. Um, but now we'll see some, some more text on the page to tell us why we're not creating an event yet. There you go. So here are our error messages that we wrote um, back on the view model. Both of these are just saying, hey, these items can't be blank, but they're saying it in slightly different ways. Um, if we were to, one another requirement that we had a name was to uh, say that, you know, a name can't be less than three characters long. That should actually probably be longer. I don't know any event that has a three character name, but let's just practice with two characters. Um, now we should anticipate that this error message will be slightly different since it's, it's uh, meeting the required attribute, but it's not meeting the length attribute. And indeed, it does give us back a different message. Um, and uh, another benefit to this is that we haven't, um, we haven't ditched our description validation attribute, which um, I would see as, as a bonus. Um, so a couple of other things to note before we move on from this validation. Um, we, have, we haven't written an error message for our email field. Um, and actually, let's just open up our developer tools because I want to kind of highlight what's happening here. Um, I'm going to use this to highlight the, the email box itself, the input box that's being created. So as you'll recall, when we created the view model, um, 
when we started using the ASP4 tags to create some of this um, information that's more tightly coupled to the view model, we've given a lot of the responsibility of creating the actual HTML that's responsible for displaying this form. We've given a lot of that responsibility to the framework itself. And what that means is that um, it's even smart enough to know things like we've, you know, we, we gave the validation, or excuse me, yeah, we give the validation attribute email address on top of contact email, which then uh, has repercussions down here in the actual uh, creation of that input element. It, the framework gives it the type email. So if I were to type in an incorrect email, like just my name and hit add event, what we're gonna see is this item, which you probably maybe seen before um, in a previous studio where we've asked you to uh, create input boxes with different types. So that's actually client side validation. So even though we've made changes to the server side code, um, there's still implications because of, because of how it's writing um, this form that create client side validation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but, but as we do talk about in the book, we do, uh, there are some limitations to what kind of protection client side validation can uh, supply on its own. So it is generally a good idea, um, even if you know that this email is going to be stopped by the creation of this type email, uh, it's still a good idea to include those validation items. And in fact, in this case, the, the actual validation attribute is responsible for um, this input type and then giving us that client side. So it's all to point out that it's very tightly coupled. Um, along those same lines, the description box itself, let's go up and look at this guy. The description box itself um, has also been given this max length of 500, which is from the um, from that validation attribute on the string length. So it, we, it, without, if a user were to input a super long string, um, it's gonna get cut off because of, uh, because of what happens with this HTML. So modern web development just um, takes the role of responsibility across the board, client side and server side. Um, so we're not necessarily going to see that error message that we wrote that says, hey, your description is too long um, in, in this current state. But uh, still a good idea to keep that error message. You could be in a situation, well, uh, potentially maybe some browser doesn't have the capability of having an input box with a max length. I don't know, something like that. But still a good idea to have those checks in place. Um, while we're in the uh, while we're in our developer tools, let's point out another thing that we can do to slightly improve our user experience. So these error messages, they're good, they're helpful. It's good that they're right next to um, the elements that they correspond to. Another thing that we can do to sort of improve the um, the user experience of interacting with this form, would be to add some coloring onto them, right? So generally error messages come in red, which is a good indication to the user that, um, that hey, something's wrong, that you need to pay attention to something. So if we take a look at what's being generated here for the error messages, like this guy for the description, we see this class called field validation error. So that's what every error message is that's going to be created based off of the ASP validation tag tag helper that we used. So if we if we use that class, we can update our application um, to change that styling. So let's go back into Visual Studio. Actually, <laughs> let me copy this so I don't accidentally misspell it. Field validation error. So back in Visual Studio, let's update this kind of main CSS file that, that we've used or that the application framework gives us. Oops. And add some styling on that item. We'll just say color red. And of course you could uh, you could do other things with this too. You could uh, you know make it bold, you could make it bigger. You could put it inside of a different colored box, whatever you want. Um, stop. 
and start again. Oops. Okay, so let's try submitting a bad event. And there we go. So now we have some red error messages. Um, I guess just to, just for due diligence, let's try submit it. Um, try to submit a valid event. Just to, just to ensure that we haven't broken, you know, that portion of our application. Okay, and there we go. So we can submit an event now. So uh, that's, you know, those are the basics of validation. But like we like we mentioned when we when we started adding those attributes, there really is, um, you know, plenty more that can be done as far as what items you what uh, what rules and requirements you want to put on your on your form fields.